So, if you're dating a narcissist, or you think you might be dating a narcissist, this is the video for you. I'm gonna go through what it looks like in the beginning, when everything seems fabulous and fine and great, before, hopefully, you wake up one day, kids in tow, running for your life, trying to get the, out of the situation, and yet being trapped. Because the truth is, being with a narcissist and leaving one can often be the hardest thing you ever do, at least one of them. So, I'm hoping to spare some of you who might not recognize the signs, and at the end of this video, I hope you will have a greater understanding of what to look out for, and more importantly, consider how the hell you're going to get out now before it gets any worse. If you've already experienced this and you're too far down the road, I hope you will watch this video and feel free to add anything else you think I forgot. But this video is really about recognizing the early signs of a narcissist before it gets so far deep in. And yet at the same time, we know we get attached and it's hard to leave, right? So before I get started, my name is Dr. Kim Sage. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I hope you will consider subscribing and hitting the bell and joining this little community that's growing. I am so grateful to be a part of it with you guys and so thankful you're starting to post and share your stories because as I keep saying, it really helps us all know that it's not just us and we don't have to be so alone. Before I go through this list, I wanna say a couple of things. One is that the odds are extremely high, especially if you think you are a narcissist magnet or somehow you found yourself in multiple narcissistic relationships and or even if it's a, you know, a pretty big one like a marriage, the chances are you come from a childhood where you were a caretaker, where you had parents who had poor boundaries and or parents who were not emotionally available to you or you weren't physically, mentally uh, or emotionally safe and you have become really good at meeting other people's needs. In fact, so good that you're the perfect target for a narcissist. Also, if uh, this is true for you, you might be an empath. You might be a person who, is, in addition to your fabulous caretaking, is a warm, loving, kind human being, and that has set you up, all right? The last thing I wanna say is that it is true from the Maya Angelou quote that people show you who they are we just have to learn to believe them. And never is that more true than for recognizing the signs of a narcissist, all right? So let's get started. The first sign is really about you. At your core, there's a very good chance you have not good enough syndrome. Now I say this all the time that we all have worthiness issues, but some of us have more than others. And this is also very true that if you are someone who deep inside your own sense of self doesn't feel good enough, you're going to be so deeply attracted to the narcissist in the beginning who is going to sort of like a mind reader, magnetize every part of you that needs to be drawn in. He is going or she is going to be able to do that because of their tendency to be charming and love bombing and so good at reading you you will never feel so seen, never so understood, never so cared for as you might in the beginning with a narcissist. You do also want to begin to notice as we go through these things, how you feel with them. Do you feel overly cared for, overly seen like you never have before as a result of this? Pay attention to what it brings up in you, not just focusing on how great they are, right? The second thing I would say that's important is to look at their social media, look at their online presence. How do they present themselves on their website, in their business, with friends, on Instagram, whatever it is, on TikTok nowadays? What is it that they seem to be most comfortable talking about? Is it themselves? Is it their success? And how much are they able to make it about other people in terms of what they post and what they share? Now, often because people who are narcissistic have avoidant attachment childhoods, they often see dating as a game and because of their lack of being able to expose their true vulnerability, they will lean in and lean out. And that can be very avoidant as many of them have these types of parents who overly focused on achievement, 
who weren't very good at meeting emotional needs, but who were very good at meeting external needs. And so when you try to get too close to them and that triggers their vulnerability and their low sense of self that they don't want you to see, they might pull back a little bit. It kind of feels gamey in that regard. And depending on your attachment style, this could actually make you chase after them more because with your own needing you know, to feel valued, when they pull back, you're gonna lean in and do even more for them. So you can feel even more seen, more valuable, more needed. The next one is they often brag. And in the beginning, it can be about their car or their job. They're really good at boasting and bragging, and it may not be over the top, and it may, but just be aware of someone who is, you know, no problem talking about their accomplishments, their things, their achievements, things like that. Now, if they're a more covert narcissist, they may have this element of like, nobody really gets me, you know, you get me. And oh my God, are you gonna love to hear that? Especially if you come from a certain childhood where you didn't feel heard or understood either. And it feels so incredible for you both to be valued and both to be seen. And that in and of itself can be a great thing. But when you add it to all these other issues, it often points to narcissism as opposed to deep romantic love or connection in a healthy way. They're often successful. Narcissists often do well. They often climb the ladder quickly. They're often at the top, looking down as they love to on everyone else. And so this can be something that you might want to, you know, pay attention to, you know, especially if you, you know, are wanting to be with somebody who can take care of you, not just emotionally, but, but financially. This feels like, oh, this person has like got it going on. I can be an equal in that, or I can be the partner and support that. Um, just pay attention to that sign. The next one is they often will describe all their exes as crazy. And if you watch my videos or you know me, you know that I think it's really unfair. We often call women crazy, but not men. And so if all their exes are crazy, that bitch was crazy, my ex-wife is crazy. No, it doesn't work like that. If you're choosing all crazy people, then there's something crazy going on with you. Now, it may just be that we're broken and wounded, but don't let them tell you that they're fine and great. It's just all their exes that are messed up. That's definitely a red flag. They often have few friends. If they do, they're more like worshipers or followers. Very rare, true, deep connections with other people because that would require reciprocity and they have a difficult time with that. They often have poor boundaries, whether this is like showing up at your place unannounced, which seems like a romantic comedy in the beginning, or they are just pursuing you way too much too soon and sort of love bombing you and that feels like so much attention, but it's also disrespecting at times what's really going on with you, what you need, what you want, and how you really feel, so poor boundaries. They're often envious of others and jealous, even of you, but in the beginning, they often mask this. And so it can seem like, I just really care about you. Or the flip side to that is often like, I'm not jealous. Like, why would I be jealous? There's no one as good as I am, which in the beginning doesn't come off like that, but it comes off really boastful and confident. And if you are someone who struggles with your own self-esteem, that can be really magnetic, right? Wow, this person is like really, really confident. They're not worried. The next one is if they make you question yourself and you feel a little crazy, like the way you remember things, the way you think about how something happened. They're so good at gaslighting and flipping the situation. And in the beginning, they're not going to be as overt about it. I mean, some might, those are more obvious, but these are more like this collection of signs where you just start to go, you know, like scratching your head, like, I don't really remember it that way, but okay. And it starts to feel that way pretty often. That can be concerning. As I said before, if you come from a caretaker background, your own childhood, certainly if you had narcissists in your own family or borderlines, any of those sort of PDs where there is a general lack of boundary respect, there's a general um, just way of being in the world that is sort of toxic but yet feels like normal, because you're used to that toxicity, you may not recognize that it's not healthy. The next one is, of course, they're not great at feedback or criticism, and yet in the beginning, you might not really engage in that, so you might watch how they receive it from other people. How do they engage with others? This is a huge sign. How do they treat people who they perceive as below them, whether it's waiters or administrators or, <laughs> there goes Maple, or assistants or gardeners? They have this hierarchy in their mind of who's at the top, and it really is important to watch how they treat other people. It's not a cliche. And you will see them oftentimes act out their narcissistic rage on other people, which seems justified. Oh, she's tired, he was tired, or they went through a hard time. But pay attention to how they treat other people and um, the way they navigate that anger with other people. Because then you will see that tantruming, which oftentimes, like I said in the beginning, kind of seems justified, but eventually the tantrum will be to you and as a result of you and directed um, at you. Obviously, they can be mean to others, but at the same time, they're not going to show this one necessarily, as I said in the beginning. And so that kind of goes with how they treat other people, that sort of lack of care for others. 
They can be entitled and powerful, and as I said before, they often are successful, and so that is a way that you think, well, it makes sense, they're at the top, they can't kiss everyone's ass, they need to have respect, but it's this sort of way of disregarding others, and you will see them do that if you pay attention. They love to talk about themselves, and they can often be really good storytellers, right? So they're used to captivating an audience. I find they're often attractive people who were born genetically attractive, and I always say that it goes back to the playground. If you get um, reinforced for, let's say, your look, so you're the cute little boy and all the girls are chasing you, and you start to lead with that, oftentimes narcissists will wield whatever genetic gifts or talents they've been given, whether it's their success or power, looks or money, and because those things in and of themselves often bring followers, they learn to really cultivate that sense of themselves even more. So these are those people who are posing and seem fabulous and get lots of attention, and then they know how to use that to work a room. And um, as a result of that, they can be very, very captivating. And the last one is they can be condescending and a little passive aggressive in the beginning. Now, eventually it, become, it can become much more direct. But in the beginning, it's like little pokes here, little jokes there, little sarcasm there. Oh, you're so cute when you're like chubby or whatever it is, something uh, along those lines. And they can be very conditional in terms of what they expect. Because you are a reflection of them, they want to have the most beautiful women, the most beautiful men, the most successful people, those in the best shape. Everyone is a reflection of them, including you. And so you have to understand that there's a condition to that and that your value is only based on what you can give them, what you represent for them, or what you reflect for them. Not necessarily what you feel from them and what they feel from you. It's all about the outside and making them feel more powerful, more successful, more loved, and sadly more alone at the end of it because they often do end up alone. If you are dating a narcissist, I highly encourage you, especially if you are married and have children, and even if you don't have children, leaving them can be very difficult. So if there's any way to get support, I would really encourage you to do that. If you're in a relationship now and you're like, God, these things are like kind of true, but I, I, I love him, I love her, I'm attached, still consider therapy or talking to someone, working through this, getting books, reading, you know, listening to podcasts to begin to understand that the deeper you go, these issues will not get better. They will only get worse and more difficult and painful for you. All right, guys, I hope you will find this video helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and feel free to post whatever you think I forgot. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and well, and I will see you next time. Bye.